Hi, welcome back for another 7 Caillou Challenge. Before I get into this one, I want to make a quick announcement. I actually launched a website for the channel here, so now you can access me on the web at SyntacticSugarDaddy.com. So you're seeing this from my YouTube channel. You probably are already aware of this part. Um, I suppose the biggest takeaway is that I just started a blog, so I'm going to start writing articles about topics that um, hopefully are helpful for uh, beginners. To understand concepts get them moving faster um, again you're aware of my videos on the channel I suppose the other notable takeaways I have this contact section here where if you have ideas for videos or things like that or, or topics you want me to cover in articles go ahead and reach out to me I list my email here but you can also use the form on the website and um, I made a support page as well um, again those subscriptions to YouTube helps grow the channel that stuff is greatly appreciated. So that said, um, feel free to bookmark this, add it as a resource for you. I'll expand on it over time. I'll add some other sections as um, more content comes in. But thank you for that, um, allowing me to make that quick announcement. We'll get into the challenge now. This one's called Bubble Sort Once. They talk about how Bubble Sort is an inefficient sorting alg algorithm, but it's simple to understand. So you encounter it a lot when you're learning how to program. And what they're going to have us do here is, is we take this unordered set in. They give an example one, but there will obviously be many others. And we're just supposed to run one iteration of bubble sort on it. And they describe how that works here. So with bubble sort, you sort of process the input, um, in this case, from left to right. But you grab pairs. You grab two. You compare them. And then you order them. Uh, this will be ascending order, so the nine will stay to the right. And then the idea is once you do that, they're sorted. Then you grab the next two items, find out which one's bigger, swap them if necessary to get the larger element to the right. And so you keep repeating this process over every um, all pairs until you get to the last pair. And a full bubble sort would continue at that point. It would have the largest value at the end, and then it would basically do the same thing over... Um, this subset of the collection and then when that pass is done it's going to do this one and when that pass is done it's going to do this one you know and then you can imagine at the end you just have one slot left and one value and you're done and your input sorted not the most efficient thing but um, it's it's an easy way to think about the sorting problem so yeah don't implement a full bubble sort you just got to do one pass and they gave another catch that um your function should be pure. It should not mutate the input array. So I'm not even going to touch this. We're not going to sort in place. I'm just going to make a separate variable to hold my sorted collection, and I'll just return that. And remember, it won't be fully sorted. It's just one pass of, of uh, bubble sort. So go ahead and pause the video. Give this one a try, and come on back when you're ready. I'll start getting into it. I'll make a integer array we know it's going to be the same size as the input right so i can say new int i'll use input dot length to size it appropriately then i'm going to make some local variables here that'll help with processing you can imagine we're going to loop through the collection the input collection grabbing pairs at a time instead of individual elements but to that end, I'll say int val1. And initially, it'll be input 0. We're just going to grab the first two values. I'll, but I'll always have a pair, right? Because we're, we're processing two at a time. Remember, we took the first two, then two and three, then three and four, that sort of thing. So I'm just setting up these variables to that end. val2 equals input 1. It's just grabbing the first two. One thing to note, you would have a problem if input was only sized 1, right? We would go to say, hey, go get the second index and you would run out of bounds so in real life you'd have to do some error checking there here you do not and then finally i'm going to maintain a, a max variable that will be math max of val1 and val2 and with these variables they'll help me as i process the collection so what we can do is we can say for int i equals zero and then we can go over the length of the input array. i is less than input.length. 
and then increment i. Nothing amazing there, right? Your standard for loop, how we typically use it. So now we're inside the for loop. What do we do? Well, we're going to compare the values and sort of load them into this new result array that I had. So um, for the first pass through, it's going to be something like this. If val1 is less than val2, what I'm going to do is say um, result 0 should have the lower value, right? val1 and result 1 equals val2, right? We, we're ordering in ascending order. The lower value goes first, the higher value comes after it. And the idea is that else, it means that um, val2 is greater than or equal to, or I'm sorry, it's less than or equal to val1. So we'll handle that as well. We, in that case, we can say, we don't really have to worry about them being equal, but that case would be covered here. So result zero equals, it's just inverted, right? You'd say result zero is val two, and result one would be val one. See, it's the same thing, we just inverted it, val two and val one are switched around based on which value is lower. So um, this works through the first pass, and then I gotta add a little more logic to um, sort of complete this. So what I'm going to do is, I got to update val1, val2, and max, right? I can't just leave them set pointing at the first two values, right? We, we got to update our pair every time. We start with the first two, then the next two, then the next two, right? And the idea is I'm maintaining the max, too, because I need to keep shifting that max. Whatever val is the maximum, I got to keep sort of bubbling it to the right. So let me handle that. Val1, Val2, and Max are fine for this first pass, but I'm just going to make a special condition where i is not equal to 0. And uh, so the first pass through the loop, this whole thing I'm about to write will be skipped. And that's fine because Val1 and Val2 are set appropriately. But once we come around, let's make sure those values get updated. So what I'll do is, is I'll say Val1 equals Max. And then I can say val2 is the next value, right? Because um, we, we always bubbled the higher one to the right. So I'm just saying whatever the previous, whichever one was bigger, that's the one we want to use for our next comparison. Um, so like if we ran a pass on this again, the 7 should go to the right. And the 7 now should be compared to the 3. It shouldn't be 5 and 3 right? Because on our first pass, we would have swapped these and it would have been 5, 7. Then we should grab 7, 3. So that's what I'm trying to achieve here. So I can say val1 is equal to max. Let's make sure that max is one of them. And then for val2, I'll just say grab that next um, input value, which would be i plus 1. That's pulled right from the original input there. Okay. And then finally, let's make sure our max gets updated for this, um, this iteration as well. So max will now be equal to... Hey, Rolo, stop. I'm doing a video, buddy. Uh, sorry about that. That's my dog. You want to come up? Come here. Come here. You want to sit with me? You can sit with me. Math max um, out of val1 and val2. So that's good. One second, I'm going to pick this guy up. He's like a little baby. I've got an, a miniature Australian Shepherd. I've got two of them now, actually. I had to pick him up on the bed like he's a baby. All right, lay down, Rolo. Good boy. He's more of a baby than a sister. So yeah, we updated the max now. And so I didn't need this the first time around, but for subsequent... Um, iterations through this for loop, we're going to make sure these are getting updated and loaded with their appropriate values. So when we drop down to this logic, um, val1 and val2 have the right values and get assigned to the output. And you can imagine as we, after we're through this for loop here, after we're through this for loop, it's a matter of simply returning the result.
So provided I typed everything right, something like this should work fine. And I just made a whole new result, so I didn't mess with this at all. They seem to be warning about that. But clearly in some of these recent challenges you've seen me do, um, they don't always enforce their rules. So maybe I, I didn't even need to do that. But I was trying to be a sport and play along. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, test. Let's see what we get here. Okay, it looks like I hit some errors. And the name math does not exist in the current context. That's fair. I used math max, but I didn't define math. Do you remember how to bring math in? Hopefully you remember. You have to bring in the system namespace to access the math class. Let's try this again. OK, index was outside the bounds of the array. Um, so I definitely messed something out there. Let me see what I did. Do a quick review. Oh, I see what I did. I did um, to input length, right? So remember, in, uh, arrays have zero based indexing. If I go to the length, I'm actually running one past the size of the array. So plus one for you if you caught that. And then test failed. Um, values differ at index zero. Expected seven, but was eight. So let's let me see if I did if I can check anything obvious that I did wrong here. Length minus one plus plus i. Yeah, max. Okay, that seems okay. Fell two. Fell two. Oh, yeah. So again, wow, what a mistake. We don't want to hard code these values, right? That was fine for the first iteration, but we want these to apply all through the loop. Sorry about that. Good job. Plus one if you caught that too. So we want to reference the current index value and not, um, not hard code those values, right? That sort of defeats the purpose of using the loop. So let's try that. I'm just keeping you on your toes, that's all. So green and green, good. We are clear for submission. Um, I'll put this out. I don't think there's any fluff to remove. I didn't use any comments, but uh, feel free, or I should say write line statements. If you are getting weird output, make sure you're adding those console write lines and check the states of your variables. While your code is running, you can get that print out. And then that's how you can make um, decisions and figure out where you went wrong. But I'll just go ahead and submit mine like this. I'll escape out. And yeah, I'll put this back to size green and submit. Go ahead and collect those honor points. I'm up to 1627 now. Very good. So this is cool. This is different. You can go through these solutions, find what else. Oh, look at this. I made number two on the list. Look at that. Internet famous. But yeah, go ahead and look through these. See what you can learn from other people too. So we got a little bit of variation here. Um, I will leave you to that. Otherwise, you know where to find me. Go ahead and tell me in the comments what kind of dog you have. I'm sorry about uh, baby Rolo with his little whiny yapping there. But uh, yeah, let me know what kind of dog you have too. I will see you in another video. Thanks for watching.